Hi, Mark here from the Tangibound Podcast Network and host of the flagship show, the Tangibound Podcast. Did you know that we over at Tangibound are always looking for amazing podcasts to promote? And did you also know that we are also proud nerds and geeks of everything from movies, music, gaming, TV shows, and comic books to wrestling, MMA, soccer, and football? Whatever you can nerd or geek out about, we've got it. And if you're interested, we can help you find it. And if you're a show looking for a place to call home, we've got you covered. Side effects may include upset stomach, dizziness, tumors, shakes, and in some rare cases, death from excessive laughter. Though to be fair, it's only sometimes. Other side effects may include diarrhea, gallstones, heart palpitations, and strong desire for cookies on the dark side. Talk to your doctor and visit TangiboundNetwork.com and see if Tangibound Network is right for you. This is a Danger Entertainment Podcast. DangerEntertainment.net Danger Entertainment Podcast Network Hey, this is Evan. Hey, Jason Underwood. And we hope you're enjoying the shows on the Danger Entertainment Network now, including the Bearded Ones Comedy Podcast. Yeah, we're super thrilled to be a part of this awesome lineup, guys. Um, and what we do here on our show is it's, look, we are just trying to make you guys laugh through all kinds of different avenues. Hear me out here. Yeah. Hear me out. Please. What we are is we're two geeky white dudes talking and trying to be funny. Yeah, not trying to blow in your mind here with, uh, <laughs> with something brand, brand new, new, but, um. Yeah. You never heard anything like this. We talk about Star Wars. <laughs> we talk about superheroes. We're talking about Marvel movies, man. <laughs> Look, we are, <laughs> we're cutting some damn, we're, we're, we're breaking some damn boundaries over we here. We are breaking new ground. Yeah. But for real, what we do is we play invented games. Yeah, and we try to spin everything into a brand new fun game that we've made yeah. up. Um, we filter it all through that sensibility and... We're both improvisers, so a lot of what we talk about ends up in, in, in sort of a scene that we have a lot of fun with. Uh, we talk about our lives, pop culture and movies. We talk about a little bit of everything. So if that's what you like, check us out. Bearded Ones Comedy Podcast on the Danger Entertainment Network. They look like Vikings. We're not doctors, therapists, trained professionals of any kind, so if you feel you do need help, please reach out uh, and get the help you need. We have a whole list of things on our files page over on Facebook at facebook.com slash crazy life podcast, and, uh, or just search on the internet for the suicide prevention hotline number, or um, go to nami.org, or um, whatever resource you can find, but just please reach out for help if you need it. If you feel as though you're going to harm yourself or others, definitely reach out. And try not to be alone. Uh, also, if you um, feel that way and you realize that you're writing a note or making plans of how you would do, uh, like harm yourself or others, definitely reach out. That's a huge red flag. And uh, lastly, please do not um, re replace the idea of therapy with listening to this show. Again, if you need help, please reach out and uh, get the help that you need or contact us. We can try to help you find the help that you need. A light sucks to the last drop. Are you going to blow your head off? Take good aim and don't forget to duck. A light sucks every Monday and all the way to Sunday. What's up or how's it hanging? I'd like to buy this world one last drink Life sucks all of the time Stick it up your sunshine And then you'll see the clouds every day And then you'll see the clouds every day And then you'll see the clouds Welcome to The Crazy Life, everyone. My name is Jen, and I am your hostess for the evening. With me, as always, we have Brian. Hey, Brian. Howdy. 
And Heno won't be with us this week, but he should be with us again next week. Um, so he's just getting back into life. And, uh, you know, we, of course, miss him. Yeah. Um, for anyone who uh, noticed that there's two episodes potentially in your uh, feed this time, it's because I'm a dum-dum and uh, somehow... <laughs> <laughs> completely overlooked actually uploading the podcast last week. <laughs> I did all the other things except actually upload it. <laughs> so, job. <laughs> so uh yeah, you'll have uh me and Jen talking about uh social media exhibitionism, then me and Heno uh at the end of it have a little conversation and uh then whatever we're doing here tonight so uh yeah well in, <laughs> enjoy the double week and sorry for uh not posting last week we did record it <laughs> we, we did yeah. and they're two very different but very fascinating yes. uh, conversations so highly recommend sticking around and, and listening to it all, all the way through for sure yes not related at all though not at all yeah <laughs> <laughs> not even close no, yeah. there is no tie between no. the two. <laughs> yeah, it's a very night and day kind of podcast. I mean, almost, almost accu a yeah, actually, but yeah, almost literally night so, and day. But so, yeah. uh, but both conversations were very, very good. Yeah. Um, before we get into the show here, I want to. Um, I forgot to mention this last week, actually, uh, which was I posted on Twitter. I'm going to post it again, <clears throat> but um, for a future episode. We've been talking about forever. Um, like, uh, we want people to give us, um, like, your song or songs for um, for when you're in a funk. And uh, it can be songs that you just listen to to kind of just ride out the feeling. Or music that, you know, to kind of help you out of the feeling kind of just whatever you listen to when you're just, you know, whether you're having a bad depression day or, you know, like I said, even if you don't have depression, just even if, you know, you're just kind of in a funk, you're just looking for a pick me up or whatever it is. So, uh, let us know. And also, um, you know, let us know why, like if there's something special about it that really, you know, does something for you, let us know. Wake me up before you go, go. <laughs> Damn time. No, we'll talk about it when we do the show. Jeez. I can't get over it. Love that song. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll start into this, into, uh, into the week. So I'm going to start because I don't start very often. Mm -hmm. So I figure I'll throw it out there and I'll start. Mm -hmm. um, last week was, it was a good week. Um, I did have a bit of a, of a, I, I hate to say it because it's not really a meltdown per se, but I had a bad mental health day. Let's call it that. Yeah. So I had a bad mental health day. It happened to be on Thursday. And I recognized the trigger, and the trigger was irrational. Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> really? Shocker. Yeah. It's oh. irrational triggers. But um, I recognized, I was able to recognize that it was an irrational trigger that um, I I shouldn't react to it. So I was able to have enough awareness to say, this is not a reaction, reactable item. And if it is, I need to react on it tomorrow because reacting right now would not be a good thing. Mm -hmm. So I was very proud that. I was able to prioritize and compartmentalize things. Um, I had a couple tears, but I did it in the confines of my quote unquote office, AKA bathroom <laughs> uh, of work. So I held myself together. I did not let on that anything was wrong to my coworkers because that um, is what I wanted. I don't really have like my conf confident or my a coworker that I, I can confide in at this point yet. Um, so I didn't want, because I recognized the fact that I, I was being so irrational, I didn't want to make a thing out of it. So I did really, I really tried hard to kind of keep it under control. And I think I was successful. Um, there was one little blip 
where um, I did draw an unwanted attention to my plight, <laughs> but um, for the most part, I still managed through it. And I just explained the fact that I was just not having a very good mental health day, and I didn't really, I couldn't really really talk about it because at this moment I wanted to make sure I mitigated any damage that may be caused by me speaking out of turn mm. and that was accepted so thankfully by a good friend who understood and uh, I said I, I will talk to you tomorrow about it if it's something that need that doesn't go away yeah so and it did um, then actually later that night I went to a movie with the couple women I work with we went and had a couple drinks and then went to a movie and the movie we saw was an older movie um instant family with Mark Wahlberg oh okay and it was a, it's about him and his wife in the movie adopting three children and the trials and tribulations they go through through the adoption process and fostering and yeah the in craziness ensues it's very funny very poignant it had a good tears, you know, good few tear moments, um, which was very clen cleansing and, and good for me. Um, so I was able to laugh a bit. I was able to cry a bit and get a lot of excess emotion out of my system, <laughs> and which was a very good thing. Yeah. Um, and then come Friday morning, I was feeling much better. So I was able to manage through it. Yay. <laughs> And I will say, I, I am pretty proud of myself because I don't believe, like, five years ago I would have been able to manage through it like I do now. Yeah. You know, I would have been much more reactive and, um, in you know, it caused a lot more problems when I'm reactive. Yeah. That if I just take a few minutes or a day if I have to, to sit on things, not react, deep breath, think them through you know, make sure I understand what's rational, what's not rational. And also what the realistic expectations I have for outcomes, which is a huge piece to it. Yeah. You know, looking that through my, you know, going, okay, I'm feeling this way. If, if I make this action, what is the consequence I'm looking for? What are the odds I'm going to get that consequence? Yeah. And really factoring it out and saying, okay, no, I probably don't want to handle it that way. Yeah. So, yep. And then th this weekend was a pretty quiet, watch the football, uh, do the laundry type of a weekend. So that actually worked out really, really well. And uh, yeah, other than that, that was kind of like my big highlight of the well, <laughs> highlight slash low light yeah. of the week. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, I, it's it, it's good because you recognized it without – you didn't have to use hindsight to recognize it as much. You know, like I see it. you saw that it was happening. And that's always <clears> – that's something, you know, we, we've said on here before, but I just want to reiterate. is like when you're going to therapy and stuff, a lot of times that's what you're trying to get to, you know. Mm -hmm. Um like, you're not always just looking for, um, like, again, you know, you're not going to therapy generally to solve it, you know. But the fact that you can recognize it and the fact that you did think about, like, am I reacting appropriately to this? Uh, is this something I should put off and then see if I still need to react to? Like, those kind of things are, those are tools that you pick up along the way. And those are really good, you know, that that's a good sign that at least you can you know, kind of go, whoa, because, you know, like a lot of like the stuff I learned in therapy about anxiety is being able to recognize, whoa, this is going on. Okay. Now I need to stop for a second basically and, and, you know, and, and, uh, proceed accordingly. And that's mm -hmm. not, not easy to do when you're in the middle of, you know, high anxiety or, any sort of an uh, uh, an emotional episode like that, so you you know it, it's good that you were able to do that. And like you said, five years ago, no, you would you you wouldn't have noticed it probably until after the fact. Yeah, and then I would be in in repair mode. Yeah, I was going to um, say cleanup mode. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Thankfully, I, I didn't have to go into a cleanup mode this time. Right. 
Um, I was very, very happy about that. Yeah, um, something cool. else I forgot, I just remembered that I wanted to bring up and, and mention. Um, I want to do a shout out to a good friend of, of mine and a friend of the podcast. Um, he, and I'm not going to share his name because it's kind of a personal situation that he's going through, mm. but um, I hope he does doesn't mind me sharing he lost his job on friday and was told um by his boss to get some mental help oh wow yeah and um i wanted to bring up in the podcast and again you know i'm not using his name so hopefully he does not mind but yeah. i just it was such an affront to me that this still exists yeah. Um, yeah. Cause the first, know, cause the first thing I was thinking of was like, I don't think that's legal. Like that's it's not. Yeah. I didn't think so. I was like, that's a discriminatory move there. But, um, without knowing all the details and stuff, of course. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, so. but the problem is, is word against word. Right. Of course. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. They're not something they're going to put into writing for sure. Yeah. Well, uh, if he is someone who needs help, I hope he, he, you know, seeks some out. Um, and, yeah. And, and he yeah. is, um, you know, he is in the, in seeking help and has been for a while and stuff. And what I wanted to make sure I, I brought up because one thing that happened a lot was that um, people would push his buttons, yeah, make him upset, then get shocked when he react. Yeah, yeah. And it's a very typical situation that happens a lot. And the only thing I can really recommend to, for people, if you are in those situations, make sure that you get help. And you seek out either whether it's change jobs, get a new job if it's a possibility for you, yeah. if you're in that type of situation or in that type of relationship, because it doesn't even yeah. have to be in a work relationship. Totally. Yep. You know, but if someone is intentionally winding you up just to have you react and then are shocked when you are reacting, mm. that is not a healthy situation to be in for you. No, that's and you, that's very manipulative. Yes. Yeah. It's very manipulative and it's wrong. It's so wrong on so many levels, especially if you're working on your, your mental health and your, you know, and working on things within yourself. So do not accept that behavior from anybody. Yeah. And I know this guy is very strong and he's going to be great and he's going to be fine. Um, it's just, you know, right now is just a path that he has to walk. Yeah. But I just felt that it was so important that I let everybody know about watching out for yourself, that taking care of yourself, and don't let others bully you like that. Yeah, and and it is difficult at times, but it is very much. Do not look at this as any other. It, it is nothing but manipulation. Like, no matter what, because that person is trying to force an emotional response out of you to get their intended de the result. And that is manipulating you. Um, because generally what will happen is, like you said, whether they get shocked or they'll they'll pull a very similar move, which is the, you know, they'll try to make you out to be the jerk at that point. You know, like, whoa, I didn't mean anything by it's like it's it's pulling the old I was just kidding move is what it right. is. You know, saying something you they know will trigger you and then go, oh, oh I was just kidding. I was just and it's like, no, you weren't, though, because, you know, that gets my goat and you did it on purpose. And yeah. So even if you were only kidding, that's that's a jerk move to do to somebody with them, you know, especially if someone has a mental illness. But in, in general, it's still a manipulative move. So. Be aware of it and don't don't accept it. That's right. So my heart goes out to you, man. I know you got this. You're strong. We're available for you. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's always a rough situation. So yeah, best best luck there. Mm -hmm. so, um, my week. All right. So how's your week? <laughs> you know, it, it's it's a weird. Um, it's always strange how you react to stuff you know because sometimes you get something and like i got something in the mail regarding my um 
my personal finances, which, you know, I'm not going to get into fully, but it's just one of those things that it's just a scenario where I, you know, I wish I could do what I know will make it go away, but I can't. And, uh, so, you know, you do what you can, but it's still, I'm finding myself like beating myself up over it because it just, it, it, it felt like a remind, like, it felt like a reminder that I'm a failure. That's what it felt like. Right. Gotcha. So, um, you know, so I was dealing with that for a couple of days and stuff and it's, you know, whatever. I mean, it'll pass. It's just, it's annoying. It's upsetting, but you know, I'm, I'm trying the best I can at the moment. So, um, but then, you know, most of the week's been pretty just average for me. No big deal. You know, other than <laughs> it's gotten a little colder here at night. <laughs> And we went to turn our furnace on last night, and for some reason it wouldn't come on. So, no, you know, we had somebody come out and look at it today. They're ordering a part. It'll either be in tomorrow or, or Tuesday. So, you know, it should will be fine. You know, we've got, like, those little heaters and stuff. And like me, it's no big deal. I'll just throw another blanket on me, and I'm fine, you know, because it's not getting cold enough that it's, like, you know, life-threatening cold, you know. So Yeah, it's just 50s. Yeah, it's just – well, I think last night was – low 40s at one point oh. and and again the place i live in the, there is no insulation really so whatever temperature it is outside unless you have heat on it feels that temperature inside pretty quickly <laughs> so true especially the cold the heat's a little different but the cold you definitely notice which again i'm fine you know yeah um but anyway, you know, it's just, it's just, that just kind of stinks, but whatever, you know, again, it'll pass it. You know, the guys, guy came out today and was like, oh yeah, it's no big deal. You just got to get this part, blah, blah, you know, so fine parts ordered a couple days. Well, within a couple days, it'll be fine. So, you know, that's okay. And honestly, I'm, I mean, part of me is also not looking forward to it because I have to start um, being careful with the vent in my room. Because if I leave it open, my room gets like a thousand degrees. <laughs> but if I close it all the way, it's frigid in there. So I have to um, go in and, t and open it, let it while it's running once or twice, and then close it. So th and then I'm usually okay. But um, mm -hmm. what stinks is when I go to sleep and I've forgotten to close the vent, and then I'm, I wake up and I'm like, and I can't breathe because it's just, geez, I keep hitting this thing because it's just too yeah. warm. Anyway, whatever, you know, but, uh, today I woke up and I've been dealing with, uh, I've talked about it on here before. I think it's like, I, I have a, a skin dermatitis on my face. That's for lack of a better term, it's basically facial dandruff. That's the best way I can explain it. So people will know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And my face gets really red and, and itchy. And then I, the stuff I have to put on it to help for that basically dries my skin out to some extent. And then it starts to flake and fall off. So I woke up today and I just have just beard dandruff basically is what it ends up being, you know, and it's, and I'm looking, it's like, you know, it's just, you feel gross, you know, cause it's not like I'm an unclean person or anything like that. It's just, it's something I, I literally can't do much about. I do what I can and that's, you know, Unfortunately, mm -hmm. there's no cure for this. And when it flares up, it like mine, when it flares up, it tends to flare up bad. And then it takes about a week for it to completely clear back up. And, of course, I wake up and I'm feeling like this. And then today's the day, you know, that my mom's like, hey, will you go to the store? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> like I do not want to go in public today because I feel gross. <laughs> you know? And, uh, you know, so... I did the best I could, you know, used a, you know, got a comb and combed out the best I could and everything. So there wasn't anything there. And I get, you know, go to the store and I come home and, and, uh, you know, and I was like, you know what? I was like, that, you know, nobody seemed to notice. I didn't notice any, you know, bad looks at me or nothing like that. All these things that, of course, my brain's going, every, you know, <laughs> the Adam Sandler thing, they're all, they're all going to laugh at you, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, and, but then I look in the mirror and I've got these huge flakes, like in my mustache off to the side, my sideburns, and they're just there. Like mm -hmm. I roll, almost like I rolled in breadcrumbs and <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh man, yeah. you know, cause it's like, you know, now in my head, it starts rolling it back, you know? Yeah. 
So it's like, you know, and again, I know odds are no one noticed slash cared. Exactly. And that's very true. Right. Because seriously, how many guys do you see that have got lint or something in their beard? So it's, you know, they probably would just think it's that if, if, if they even noticed, but, but as we all know, stuff like this, it's, I noticed. Yep. And no, that is all that matters. Yeah. And, and then it just eats at you and it's, yeah, it sucks. So I have to call my doctor and make an appointment anyway. Cause it's just time, you know, for insurance reasons, you have to go every so often. Otherwise, basically they won't cover it. So I have to go for that. And I was like, well, I haven't talked to a doctor about this in a while and it's gotten a little bit worse. So it's like, well, maybe it's time to do that again. And see if there's a better option out there. I, I've been reading a lot about other things to try that I've never, and I've tried, and you know this, I've tried a lot of stuff for this and mm-hmm. nothing seems to truly work. You know, like some things have helped a little, some do, you know, and it, it's just annoying. So it's definitely something I wish there was something I could, you know, a way to get rid of it. It is mm-hmm. super annoying. But anyway, you know, so that's kind of, that kind of made me feel like garbage for, you know, part of the day today, <laughs> you know, but then, and then like I told you after that, you know, we, we went and got something to eat and, you know, some of our food was forgotten and that made me, honestly, it was funny. I, I must, I must be in kind of a lower point today because that got me mad really fast. And mm. I'd noticed over the last few years, I've gotten much, much better about things not sending me from zero to 60 as far as my temper goes, but I was mm-hmm. so mad, you know, and it's like, you know, and, and it's like, if the place wasn't 10 minutes away, I would have been like, let's go back. I'm go, I'm going to go in and talk to somebody, <laughs> right. you know? So instead I pulled the, you know, the, the current move, which is social media and report, you know, yeah. tell them, Hey, you know, your place took my money and didn't give us food. Exactly. Do you know who I am? Yeah, (laughs) right. (laughs) I'm going to have my army of thousands of podcasters all Mm -hmm. boycott. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Do you know who I am? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, it was Wendy's and who's boycotting Wendy's, you know, nuggets and stuff. So, you know, Uh, but whatever. I mean, again, it was, you know, although I will say this is as quickly as I got enraged, I also was able to calm myself back down. That's good. Pretty fast because I, you know, just pull the meditation moves, you know. Yep. Take a step aside, focus on your breath, you know, just get back to what what is affecting me right now. That's mm-hmm. already happened. That's gone. You know, what is happening right now. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's been, uh, as far as I can remember, that's that's been in a, about it for this week. Yeah. I can't think of anything else. So. Well, I mean, that kind of brings us right into our topic of making good choices. So I think both of us had to make some choices this weekend and our week, and we've been making some decent choices. Sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Somebody's not ready. <laughs> no, I, I lost it as well. I have like 25 tabs open right now, so I, I didn't notice. <laughs> I lost the one I had. Uh, this is from uh, Psychology Today. It's written by Tina Gilbertson. Um, and I love, like, her blog name is Constructive Wallowing, uh, oh, <laughs> which I enjoy. Uh, <laughs> but the name of this is How to Make a Good Decision in Seven Reasonably Easy Steps. Um, I'm just going to read, you know, the first part of this, and then we'll go into the the list that's on here, too. It says, Decisions, Decisions. It's not always easy to get certainty on questions with no clear answers. Should you take the job you know you'll enjoy or the one that pays more? I just had a friend go through that recently. Uh, Should you leave your family and friends to move closer to your long-distance boyfriend? Haven't had that one come up yet. Uh, Should you drop a longtime friend who's become flaky? Not like me, flaky. But (laughs) But I'm bummed. Or cut him some slack. Um, And she says, here's a suggested... Here's a suggested procedure for making tough decisions. Turn the decision into a yes or no question, such as, should I take the insurance job? Should I move to Chicago? 
should I drop this friend? That one's an interesting one to me because, you know, most of these questions, if you just go yes or no, that's really, I mean, that should be your first step because you're like, I, I don't know. That's why I'm asking this question is because I'm not sure of the answer, you know? Yeah, that's, that's really tough to break them into a yes, no question. Yeah. It's really tough. <clears throat> uh, number two, she says this part is pretty standard in decision making. Make two columns on a sheet of paper. One is for pros. One is for cons. Uh, list all the pros and cons you can think of in their respective columns. Try for at least a dozen of each and keep going until you exhaust all of your ideas. Since a sound decision should involve both your head and your heart, the following steps are designed to help you corral your thoughts, feelings, and values. And I want to say with that one, um, I think you have to be careful... Um, you have to be very aware of your, like me, my anxiety is going to want to put a lot of things in the cons column and nothing in the pro column. So True. you have to maybe write all your stuff down and then maybe filter it or have someone else, you know, kind of be your filter maybe. And I'm not saying make the decision for you, but at least go, yeah, but this is a, this could happen no matter what kind of, you know, like essentially weed out the ones that are not as logical as you may think, you know, cause they're concerns, but at the same time, you know, I don't are they know. Re yeah. And that's do the wise. Wise are really, really important too. And you're making your lists, you know, and it's like, you know, I don't want to move Chicago because it's high crime rate. Well, really, why? Yeah. Uh, high, you, high crime rates everywhere you go to. Right. Do you have children? Is it for that reason? Or is it for, yeah, because like you said, it's crime could happen to you anywhere. And even in Chicago, there's going to be parts that have higher crime rates than other parts. And, you know, kind of like Detroit. Everyone gives Detroit a bad name. But there's parts of that city that are really awesome. There are parts of that city that I would not want to be in at any time of day because they're pretty bad, you know. Right. Um, but that doesn't mean the whole city's that way. And same with Chicago. I'm sure there's some areas that are much better, you know, than others. Mm -hmm. And and you know, again, you also have to, of course, look at you know what what you're able to afford. Is the area of Chicago I'm moving into, whatever. But yeah, just make sure that you're not that you're not letting paranoia make your decisions, you know, make sure that they're, cause you know, a high crime rate is a legitimate concern. Yeah. You know, it can, it's just, you gotta make sure that it's on the list for the right reasons. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So right. Make sure you're asking yourself a lot of questions and really challenge your, challenge yeah. yourself to really think about this. It's like, why is yeah. this an issue for me? Is this really an issue or is this something that I'm just, I'm, kind of blowing out of proportion you know something i wasn't even thinking when i was talking about running this year list past someone who for a filter purpose if you were in therapy use your therapist absolutely 100 percent. your therapist yeah. will not make the decision for you because that's not their job and they'll tell you that but they can help you go this is an appropriate concern this is an or like me when i had concerns about various things my would pull the you know okay let's play it out Let's say that happens. Mm -hmm. Then what? Then what? You know? So anyway, but yeah, just um, like I said, if you have a mental a mental health condition, make sure you keep that in mind with your list and don't let that weigh one side of your pro con list unfairly, mm -hmm. you know, because it's going to like I guarantee you almost anything you give me that and I you want me to make a pro con list. It's a big life decision. I'll probably load the con list. Because in my head, my anxiety is going, stay safe, stay where you are, do this, don't do anything new and exciting or, or dangerous or this or that, you know. It's like, you're cool, you're comfortable as you are, why make any changes, you know? <laughs> so, mm -hmm. uh, number three, check your pulse. Now that you've recorded the pros and cons of saying yes, examine each column separately. Do you feel a pull one way or the other? If so, make a note of which column you're drawn to. Don't worry, you're not making a decision yet, just noting your reaction. Hmm. Oh, okay. You know what? I <laughs> I missed this when I read this before. Um, number four, cross out all items that aren't necessarily true. 
For example, I'm too old to go back to school. Other people won't understand. For now, leave intact any items that say something might happen, since that's probably a fact. Like, or that something might or could happen. Before moving on to the next step, think about some of your core values, such as family, health, commitment, honesty, respect, or personal development. Although many people share similar values, we don't all rank them in the same order. What's in your top five? Once you have a handle on some of your personal values, did you want to say anything about the other before I move on? Or Mm-mm. No, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, I think number four kind of points out what I was getting at or what we were talking yeah. about before. You know, like if it's not something that really could happen, you know, get rid of it. But... Uh, Number five is circle any items that speak to your personal values. Whether you value flexibility and freedom or structure and routine, your personal values point to what's right for you. An example of an item you might circle is, will allow me to set my own hours. Excuse me. Interesting. Yeah. Um, What? Go ahead, if you have some. No, I was just going to say that's, it's an interesting way of looking at things. To kind of um, help you pri- help you prioritize the list even further. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense, right? If you feel that mm-hmm. fill in the blank is your most important thing, what on your list, you know, supports or contradicts that? You yeah, know? and like the Chicago. If your family's not in Chicago and family is number one importance to you, then that's going to weigh heavier than something else on your list. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> um, number six is underline items that focus on loss, such as it might not work out or it's very expensive. When we focus on what we might lose instead of what we hope to gain, we risk stalling our own growth. Which is funny because I think that kind of goes to what I was saying about my anxiety because my anxiety is going to give me a lot of those things, you know, like, well, it's expensive. It might not work out. You may not make friends, blah, blah, you know, and it's like really all you're doing is, you know, your, your anxiety is trying to find ways to shut the door instead of it's like, this is not a legitimate concern. You will make friends. Like the odds of you not making friends are ridiculously small, you know. Unless you absolutely don't interact with anyone. <laughs> exactly. you know? So it might not work out. You have to leave because that's true. It may not work out. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to, like you were saying, like, I'm like move to Chicago, it may not work out. Then it's kind of like, okay, well, can or do I have a plan B that is doable? Can I come back home? Can I, you know. Otherwise, mm-hmm. I feel like that kind of gains a little extra weight. Like, if you don't have a viable backup plan, you know, then that could kind of be like, well, because you don't want to be in a scenario where it's like, well, this has to work, you know, like, because then mm-hmm. you can make bad decisions based on that, you know. So, <clears throat> uh, number seven, count all items that are neither crossed out nor underlined and sum them up at the bottom of each column. Add a point to the total under the column that spoke to you in step three above, and another point to the total under the column that contains the most circled items. If there's a clear winner, you're done. Hmm. If you go through the steps above and it's still not clear whether it's yes or no, ask yourself the following questions. Is it really not clear, or is it just difficult to follow through? Who am I afraid will be hurt by this decision? Do I have to decide this today? (laughs) Can I flip a coin? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Don't ever flip a coin for your life decisions. (laughs) I'm like, don't. 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 don't, don't. Not for the big ones anyways. No. <laughs> yeah. It's for dinner as a coin flipper. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Pizza or Taco Bell. Oh, okay. You know. <laughs> That's a coin flipper. Should I move That's to Chicago? Good. Heads or tails? <laughs> <Like> <laughs> Probably a bad call. Um I guess it depends. I mean, if you have like literally no downside to moving to Chicago and you want to coin flip it, sure. You know, <laughs> like <laughs> take chances. Yeah. You know, like if you're young, you have no bills, you're not in school, you you know, the family thing doesn't, yeah, whatever, go for it. 
Uh, if I had to decide mm -hmm. based on how I feel today rather than how I think I might feel in the future, would the answer be clear? Uh, she says, the last question is especially helpful. As Dan Gilbert points out in his book, Stumbling on Happiness, most of us are terrible predictors of how our future selves will feel. I heard a podcast talk about that, how we are really, really bad at predicting what we actually want. It's why so many people struggle with dating and love. Really? Yeah, because make, the things, think about it, how many people fill out their dating profiles and end up with somebody who's really not like a lot of the things on their profile. That's true. And that's really, it's like that our brain literally has no idea what we actually want. <laughs> <laughs> we are screwed. It's just that, it. that spark in chemistry, you can't predict it. You know, no, it just right. happens. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, but anyway, it says, therefore, when making decisions, the most sensible thing to do is try to please our current selves. Which, that, that makes perfect sense, too. Because, again, we're always talking in here about living now, not for the future, not in the past. Right. Who do you, who, you know, what, how does that decision affect you currently? Mm hmm You know? Because, yeah, any any move you make in your life six months from now, you might go, ooh, boy, did I make the wrong decision. But if you use that as an indicator of how to decide something, you'll never take any risks. Right. No, that makes sense. Because you'll always be, well, what if it doesn't work out? You know, and yeah, you have to look forward a little bit, especially if it's a big move, like moving across the country or something, you know, mm -hmm. or or leaving one job for another. You know, that that's a significant move. So six months from now, if you chose money over happiness, you know, you, you or vice versa, you know, you might you might regret it. But it's like, well, you made the best decision you could at that time. That's all you can ever do. Correct. Then if you come to that realization, it's like, well, analyze your situation and make the best decision you can make at that time and just keep going forward with that. So, yeah, I thought this was a good idea, though, because a lot of people like to, they're this article because a lot of people like to make lists as a way to help them um, use logic to make their decisions and stuff, you know. So I think mm -hmm. this this not only allows you to make a list, but it helps you to filter the list down, you know. Do with it once you have the list. You know, I think yeah. that's kind of a sticking point for a lot yeah, of people. Yeah, yeah. You know, I guess I could sum total the columns, but there's going to be things on the columns that weigh heavily, more heavily than other things. So mm -hmm. those need to have more weight. Yeah. And like I said, you know, if you do have trouble filtering in the ways like that she says in here, this article, the link for it will be in the show notes if anybody wants it. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, this is where, like like I said, a, a therapist or, or a friend could help. Um, you know, just make sure you're not asking anyone to make the decision for you. You know, like that that's for you to decide. That's not for your friends or family or anyone else to make that decision. Um. But, you know, if, like me, I'm the type, if I were doing this before something major and I, you know, I could see myself talking to a therapist first to be like, hey, can, can we talk about this? Mm -hmm. You know, because I, I need to basically make sure that <clears throat> I feel that I'm giving weight to the things that deserve weight. Yeah. You know, because there are a lot of things that you could put on these lists that I'm sure really don't deserve to be on there. I'm sure. You I'm know, sure. Yeah. Because, you know, like for me, a great a great point would be if I'm, if like for moving, let's say, let's say I was to move to, to wherever, you know, one of my cons would be my support system is not there. You know, mm -hmm. that's a significant weight. You know, that's something that would be very difficult to um, recreate. To recreate, exactly. Because the support system I have is from years of people knowing me being in my life coming along the journey with me you know like there's a whole lot of that you can't just poof and you have it again you know so it's not impossible to recreate it no but it would be no difficult. but it would definitely take time and it could be incredibly <laughs> difficult to do so it's definitely something that deserves weight and would be on the con list of course mm -hmm. so you know like that that's the kind of example like <clears throat> that I would make sure, and, and that's something else too. Make sure stuff like that ends up on your list 
because it is a concern. You know, like if you have a mental health situation, make sure you put it on there. Or, uh, you know, this can also get you to a point where maybe you can ask some questions like, can your therapist, um, can you talk to them by phone? Can you Skype with them? You know, whatever else to where maybe that then you can go, okay, well, I can still talk to all my family on the phone. I I still have contact with a therapist, you know, like to where you go, okay, well, my, th- my support system won't be there, but I can bring them really close to me in those forms, you know, making yeah. the transition easier, that kind of stuff. So it allows you to analyze a situation a little better, um, you know, at, at that point. <clears throat> so, yeah, there you go. Awesome. Well, I think that was a pretty solid show. It's a little bit light, but that's okay because we had a heavy duty show last week. So, <laughs> so, so I think we're good. Yeah, you good. Yeah, so. awesome. Well, if you would like to continue the conversation with us, you know what to do. You can read. Reach at Crazy Life Podcast at Weebly dot com is our website. The Crazy Life Podcast at Outlook dot com is our email address. You can reach me direct on Twitter at Jen's Crazy Life. That's Jen with a G. And you can reach Heno um at Heno Heiter on Facebook or Ida Heno on Twitter. Um and, and Moving the Needle is the po- other podcast he's on. I forgot to mention the other podcast I'm on is Shake the Sheets. So if you want to hear more from us, you can check out either one of us on those shows. And you, Brian, how can they reach you? You can find me on Twitter at Stunami. Uh, you can find my other podcast at Salty underscore Language on Twitter or at SaltyLanguage.com. That show is not safe for work. Um, was I forgetting? Oh, this show can also be found on Twitter at The Crazy Life Pod, where I post when new episodes go up. Uh, you can find us over on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash crazy light podcast. Um, we are part of the tangent bound network, which can be found at tangent and the danger entertainment network, which can be found at danger entertainment.net. So go check some of those out and, or some of the shows on those networks, probably find some other stuff that you, uh, enjoy also. Um, and you know, just for my own selfish plug here, um, you know, there's a link in the show notes if you'd like to, you know, help me out with my GoFundMe, um, you know, to try to get back on my feet with my bills and whatnot. And also, more recently, I've been looking at, uh, like, trying to maybe get back into doing some, like, graphic design type stuff. But the computer I'm using is not so friendly with that, so <laughs> I need to get my other one fixed. <laughs> but whatever. Uh, if you can help out, awesome. If you can or don't want to, that's fine, too. I understand. So. Thank you for anyone who has already. Um, And then, of course, as usual, you know, I'd like to remind you that if you need help, please reach out. Uh, There's tons of people out there willing to help. uh, And and there's all sorts of confidential support out there. So if you don't, you know, if you want to remain anonymous that, you know, there's text hotlines or text lines you can talk with. There's phone lines you can call people. There's internet groups and all this kind of stuff out there. So please reach out, um, you know, if you need help. We know it's really hard, you know, but uh, we've been there. It's worth it. Um, If you don't, for some reason, if you don't think it is, go back and listen to early episodes of the show and then come back and listen to newer episodes of the show and listen to the difference in how me and Jen talk. Mm-hmm. We, you know, there's been quite a bit of, of growth in those years of doing this show. So absolutely, it's not easy, you know, like I said, but, you know, if you want to talk with us about it, we're both more than open to. And so is Heno, you know, we're all open to questions and everything. So if you need to, you know, reach out to one of us. Um, and then also, you know, please reach out to people, um, reach out to friends you haven't talked to in a while or just people you care about and just let them know you care just see how they're doing, uh, whatever, because, you know, you just never know when that, that one message might might change the course of someone's day, life, week, you know, whatever it is. So, you know, just, just uh, you know, do that and try to help out in that way. And then lastly, um, just, you know, let's just 
try being nice to one another. Let's just keep doing that. Um, again, there's so much divisiveness, so much hate going on right now, and it's it's stupid. It's just beyond stupid. We're fighting over dumb, dumb things in many, many ways. So let's just try to be nicer to one another. And keep in mind, you know, when I say be nice, um, I mean to yourself, to others, any chance you can. But also let's keep in mind that it's okay for other people to have different opinions than us. Like for years and years and years, we've all had different opinions and people on stuff and not had some of the bitterness that's gone on. So, you know, just keep in mind that, you know, like, why would you want to be around people who don't have different opinions than you? Like, literally, that's the same as being in a group with yes men. You know, like, I want people to challenge me intellectually. I want people to have discourse with me. It doesn't have to be mean or violent, but let's just keep all that in mind. Let's just be civil and nice to one another, even if we don't agree. Very well put. So with that, everybody, go out there. And oh, are you done, Brian? No, no. I'm, or yeah, I'm done as far as, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, for some reason, I, I was thinking that you had something else. No, no, that no. was it. Mm -mm. All right, cool. Sorry. So oh, with that, folks, go out there, have the best day you can possibly have, best week you can possibly have, and spread some happiness and joy whenever you possibly can. So have a great week.